It's time for Talent Talk with the 2nd Combat Aviation Brigade on AFN The Eagle, serving America's best. That is correct. You heard the man. This is the one and only Talent Talk. It is currently 207 on this Wednesday, February 11th. Very good afternoon to you. Very good afternoon to my guests in the studio. This is AFN Osan, the Eagles serving America's best. And I've got one guest that I very much know, I recognize, familiar to you as well, Army Captain Jessica Meyer. Appreciate you being back, ma'am. Second to none. Second to none. We'll make sure we plug that at least once a segment. And uh, brand new to myself and most likely to our listener as well, Army Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Martin. Thanks for being here, sir. Hey, thanks a lot. Good afternoon. Absolutely. And I was, I was asking before we went on air, Sir, what was your first name? And you said... It's Aaron. It's Aaron. So we share our first name. Hopefully we'll share more than that. But uh, we got a great show lined up for you and for our listener who is kind of wondering, who are you? What do you do? Where you come from? Maybe fill us in a little bit. Yeah, I'm part of uh, the, the Rotational Aviation Reconnaissance Squadron, 26 Cav. We left nice, beautiful paradise, <laughs> sunny Aloha, uh, Hawaii. Just a little over about uh, 20 days ago. Oh, wow. A uh, whole squadron left there, got on the plane that day. It was a nice, crisp 85 <laughs> degrees. You remember this vividly? Oh, I do. Right. I think about it often. Most mornings when I get up for PT, I can still see the palm it's, tree. It's only 20 days in and you're thinking that. Yes, yes. But it's going to get better. It will. Hopefully, it will. Sure. But uh, no, I'm part of the 26 Cav Squadron. Uh, just took command about 90 days ago, but was there for the final culminating training event as we prepared for this deployment. And, uh, you know, excited to be here. Yeah, I definitely want to say welcome. I mean, you guys are basically replacing our, our last guest on the show uh, last week. So it's kind of cool that we kind of get this continuity of sorts. But uh, you've been here about 20 days, you said? We have. Our main body got here on the 21st of January. Our uh, Advon was here a couple weeks prior to that. Sure. And uh, what about yourself? Get a little personal here. Where are you from? How long have you been in the, the uh, United States Army? Coming up on 18 years in the Army. I've uh, been an Army aviator for the majority of that time. I'm actually a dual military couple. My wife is oh, wow. an Army helicopter pilot as well. A That's awesome. A lieutenant colonel. So if you hear about a squared away Lieutenant Colonel Martin, rest assured, <laughs> it's not me. It's not you. And it's. I know it can be very confusing sometimes. Did she sometimes. pay you to say that? No, but oh. that's why I'm still married after 17 years. I know the right way to You understand right how to work it. Absolutely. Well, that's very cool. I imagine that's like a great blessing, but I imagine there's some challenges that come with that as well. It does. It absolutely does. But we've uh, we've we've made it work out. Um, you know, those dual military families out there knows that comes with a little bit of stress. We've got two kids that are six and four, so... You know, they were learning resiliency at an early age. Sure. I, I spent the last probably 18 months as a single parent while she was deployed to Afghanistan. Wow. Moved to Hawaii and tag, and now it's her turn. So she's she's home with a sick son today. Sure. Uh, Trying to take care of him. But, you know, that's that's the struggles of being a military family. And Absolutely. I think we all know those. And I think you guys do the right thing, which is kind of sharing the load as we do as many service members, yep. right? you got to figure out how you get through those problems each day when they come. Absolutely. And uh, where do you hail from? Where, where do you call home? I'm originally from Missouri, you know, but uh, at this point, the Army is my home. I, I've been away far longer yeah. than I was there. So. Sure. But, uh, yeah, that's where the family still is. She's from upstate New York, so okay. when we do go back at times, those are the places that we return back to. It makes sense. My dad was in the Air Force 21 years, and when he retired, it was kind of like that culture shock I imagine most people do experience because they get done. And like you said, your home is the Army. That's right. Yeah. And one day that's not going to be the same. Absolutely. It's a, and it's a difficult day when that comes. That's the point of uh, separation in that family that you have. But, uh, you know, I think the Army's gotten a lot better over the years sure. in, in keeping track of those people and making making the Army for life, really. But uh, that's where we grew up, so we're at least, I'm used to a little, to a little bit of the cold weather. I've been sure. stationed in Korea before. This oh, is my okay. second time here. I was here about 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, up north, so I at least was uh, expecting the cold weather. The, Some familiarity. The air, you know, a little bit of that cutting wind on the morning when you head out to PT. Well, very, very cool. I appreciate you being here. Before we get you back into the music, uh, what do you guys have on the agenda this hour? Certain things we want to push out? Yes, uh, we would like to talk about some of the upcoming events 2 6 has and uh, some of the goals uh, for personally and for the soldiers as sure. well. Sure. Well, that sounds like a great show. I'm excited about it, and you should as well. Let's get back into the music. This is five seconds of summer. And now, back to Talent Talk on AFN The Eagle, serving America's best. Welcome back to Talent Talk. My name is Army Sergeant Aaron Lloyd, 218, and joining me in the studio, Army Captain Jessica Meyer. Ma'am, thanks for being Second back. Second to none. Second to none. She got that in there. And Army Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Martin, again, thank you, sir. Hey, thank you. Fight tonight. Absolutely. Ooh, we got all sorts of slogans. I should just make make some up as we go. But I appreciate you being here, sir and ma'am. And uh, we're talking, if you missed, at the top of the hour, just kind of letting our listener know that you guys just came in about 20 days ago. 
A new unit here on a rotational type tour deployment, correct? Right. It's a it's part of the Army's new direction where we have rotational deployments, nine month deployments. And what do you think about that? I mean, before we really dive in, you think that's something that uh, you could see maybe sticking? Absolutely, I yeah. can. I think it's a I think it's a good direction for the Army to go. Uh, first of all, you have a unit that is has a really kind of a trajectory towards its training. Sure. So this squadron, second squadron, redeployed from southern Afghanistan about two years ago mm -hmm. and has known that we're coming here. So okay. a little bit different than the R4 Gen model that we're used to, sure. where you're going right back to Afghanistan or Iraq. Uh, this is something different where you can deploy and then partner with other coalition forces, yeah. other partners that are out there. But what it really does is it adds a level of readiness to 2nd Infantry Division to the peninsula. When you come in here as a fully trained unit, you've gotten to that individual level, you've moved on to the collective level. Sure. And uh, truly ready to come in and do your go-to-war mission. Yeah, I feel like I've talked to enough people now in the past year-ish that uh, I see it kind of sticking. I see it kind of keeping going. But I'm, I'm just a sergeant, so who knows. But uh, like we were saying at the top of the hour, you guys just got here a little while ago and you came from Hawaii. That's right. Aloha. What was it like over there? It was beautiful. Yeah. Every day is uh, every day is a holiday, uh, so to speak. You know, pretty much year round. You got the highs in the 80s and the lows. Frigid will drop down into the mid 70s. <laughs> Frigid. I know. So sounds sounds like the West Coast. It really. only took me about three three months there before I was actually putting on a jacket in the morning when it was you know 72 degrees. It's and, all relative, right? It is absolutely. It's all relative, especially when you arrive here and it's it's in the 20s down in the teens in the morning. And this is a warm winter here. I don't. Can you, can I, I'm you not believe believing that? it. No, not yet. Give I'm me another serious? month and oh, okay. I may be able to buy into it. Okay. Right now, I'm still I still sure. disagree. Well, for people who've never been stationed to Hawaii or maybe they just have questions about it, what is that kind of way of life? look like in terms of just like regular training PT things like that does anything change it, it doesn't it doesn't look much different than uh, you know in my experience in different local installations out there it's still army uniform PT every five days a week you still have the same type of training but uh, you get to take a look around and realize that you are in some pretty amazing beautiful places for helicopter pilots you sure. know getting to fly around those islands and our, our final collective training event we actually went on three different islands as part of it oh, wow. so we did missions and gunnery ranges out over the ocean so some really unique opportunities for for soldiers there to go places that you wouldn't go just being a citizen or even a tourist so it's a it's a great opportunity really to do the normal army stuff but to get to do it in paradise and i'm a little and i'm a little ignorant on it but in that kind of region is the navy kind of a a, a part of that area it is and you know on the island of oahu you have all the services there so you have hickam air force base it's right there with okay. the joint base of pearl harbor up on the north side you oh, have sure. kaneohe and the marine corps base that is there and then you have the army's major footprint with the 25th infantry division so you get to you work with all those it is it's units. a joint environment so wow. you got a small island relatively small you know when you look at 30 miles across and you got all those large bases uh, I think the total population is around 150,000 wow. military people that are living on the island and obviously Navy has a role you can't go very far you can't get things onto other islands unless you have the Navy moving you same thing with the Air Force so the joint partnership that you get in that kind of location is, is probably a whole lot higher than you see other places I, in my experience second maybe only to Korea yeah as much much like we're standing on an Air Force base sure, today sure you kind of have everybody here with that same type of focus and same mission that you get after and what about your soldiers here I mean obviously you brought your unit here have you kind of had a good eye on them seeing how they're adjusting whether they like it or not etc we have you know you Times are changing in our army, so probably about 40% of our enlisted. This is their first duty assignment and ultimately their first deployment. Sure. So those of us have been around a little bit longer and are used to the Iraq and Afghanistan model. This is clearly not that. It's not. And, uh, you know, they're learning, I, I think, slowly, but, you know, through a lot of stuff that we're talking about, there's some just amazing opportunities here. And at the individual soldier level to come over and, one, know your mission, know you're trained, be qualified in your weapon, those basic skills. But then to have the opportunity to go out and train in this environment, sure. partner with uh, with our Korean partners that are out there is a really unique opportunity. And what you can do in civilian clothes, you know, what you can do it's on true. the weekends where you can go and see things. Uh, really, my hope is, is that soldiers leave here having an amazing deployment and really some lifelong experiences that they're going to make going to remember absolutely i think it's definitely one of those countries that maybe people from the west kind of don't really know or are ignorant on so they have these misconceptions and you've been here before so you, yeah. you didn't really have that problem but i imagine when you first came you didn't really know what to expect and then you show up and you're like it's not really what we expected it to right. be 
That's exactly you right. Know? You know, my my wife and I. My wife was a whole lot more concerned of coming over here because some of the, sure. the reputation that existed in the past. But sure. We both have discussed it was about the best year we have spent in the army. So we're, I was excited yeah. to come back here and share that type of experience with uh, with the leaders and the soldiers of, of the squadron. Well, that's good to hear, and I appreciate you both being here. We'll take a little break here. We'll be back in ninety seconds with your weather. And now, back to Talent Talk on AFN The Eagle, serving America's best. That man speaks the truth. This is the one and only a Talent Talk on AFN Osan. It is 232. My name is Army Sergeant Erwin Lawyer. Still joining me in the studio, Army Captain Jessica Meyer. Man, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, as second, always. Second to none. Question two cab land. <laughs> From two cab land. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you being here. Also, Army Lieutenant Colonel, I'm a little biased here. Aaron Martin. Thank you very much, Lightning Horse. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. So if you missed the show so far, a few things we discussed. Are your unit coming in? Been here about 20 days. You're here for nine months-ish. Yep. Uh, coming from Hawaii. Talking about that a little bit. But as you're here, sir, I do want to know, let's talk military for a little bit because it is important. That's why we're here. we got a mission to complete. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish while you're here? Well, this opportunity that we have really is a balance where we are in training and to be able to get out there and really add to the readiness of the 2nd Infantry Division with the training standard and status that we are now. Sure. But also get after some of the unique environments that Korea has to offer. Getting to fly in a different country, getting to fly over a Seoul. You know, it's like flying through New York City yeah, in the absolutely. day and night. It's pretty amazing. 25 out, million people. Absolutely. It, it's something to see. Something to see on the ground, something to see in the air. From the sky. But we're going to have a lot of training opportunities. So going out there, doing some gunnery operations where we'll be out over the water, doing some overwater operations. And, and those training opportunities come with uh, the ability to partner with the, with the Koreans. So when we go out and we do overwater stuff, we'll be working with the 1st Rock Fleet. Okay. And then we have a, a sister helicopter battalion, the 103rd Rock Aviation Battalion, that we're doing some partnering operations with as well. We hope to do some uh, officer enlisted and soldier exchanges. So okay. we're going to send some of our soldiers to there, and they're going to go live and work with uh, with the Rock wow. for three or four days. And we're going to do the same. They're going to well, have cool. some back come and uh, and hang out with us. It's like an exchange student it, almost. It's, it's exactly what it is. I sat oh. down with a battalion commander and said, "Hey, we would love to have you guys." And more importantly. I don't know if it's more importantly, but I want my guys to go in and experience that kind of a culture. And how does a different army work in the day-to-day sure. -day operations? What's what's PT like when you're in the Korean army? And, and share those things that we have with them. So we'll, we'll do that along with, uh, you know, some good old sports and, and some barbecues. And then in a, it, we're part of a cavalry squadron and a great cavalry history that we have. We have yeah. what we call spur rides where you can go and earn your spurs. Oh, wow. Focused on, you know, that soldier individual task training. Sprinkle in a little bit of the spree de corps and history that sure. the cavalry brings. But uh, that's something that we discussed with our, our Korean counterparts, and they were very excited to be part of that as oh, well. Oh, I believe that. So uh, they, we talked to them about the spur and what the spur means, and they, they saw our Stetsons that, that we get to wear sometimes. So sure. we'll have some of those come and do do the uh, the spur ride with us and get out there and some of that training. So I, th I think it's a great opportunity you know, to really create those lifelong memories for our soldiers and to share that type of memories with our Korean counterparts. And now, back to Talent Talk on AFN The Eagle, serving America's best. What's that? You want more Talent Talk? Well, I just so happen to have lots of that just for you. It is 248. My name is Army Sergeant Aaron Lloyd. Joining me in the studio still, Army Captain Jessica Meyer. Second to none. Second to none from Two Cab Land. Also, Army Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Martin. Oh, fight tonight. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, both of you, as we kind of wrap up the show. If you missed it, shame on you, because it's been a really great show, but we are recording it, and we're going to put it on Facebook page, etc. Yeah, the 2CAB Facebook page, as well as the YouTube page. Well, great. So you got that to look forward to, recording that, like I said. But as we wrap up the show, sir, I want to turn it to you. We've talked about uh, how you came from Hawaii. You guys are here for your nine-month kind of tour deployment. Uh, you got different plans that you have here. Uh, but what about your soldiers? Are there certain goals you have, either professionally or personally, for them? Yeah, I do. You know, as I told you earlier, I was here about 10 years ago myself, and my wife and I really enjoyed it. But what we enjoyed is we're getting out and involved in the culture. So one of the big priorities I have is for our soldiers to get out and see and experience Korea sure. outside of the uniform. We're going to take them out to the great training sites, out to the ranges, but I want them out there doing the fun things too. Uh, one of the things we did just last weekend, and part of exposing our leaders to those opportunities that are out there, is we took all the troop commanders, you know, our company level commanders, sure, sure. And first sergeants up to Seoul, 
and I sent them out on a day-long scavenger hunt. Oh, gosh. So they had about uh, 25 items, and each each place they went was worth, you know, a set number of points. We sent them out to the Nam De Moon Market, sure. Nam De Moon, sure. up to the top of the tower on Nam San. Wow. Uh, down to Gangnam, to the Coex Mall, I mean, pretty much all over the yeah. city. We sent them through Itaewon. I wanted them to, you know, go to the normal places that everybody goes. Welcome back. It is 2.55 right now. 47 degrees, very warm degrees. Hazy skies for tonight, partly cloudy. Lows of 23. And for your Thursday's forecast, 36 clear skies. If you want to trade in those presidential flashcards and get some uh, Korean money instead, uh, exchange... Exchange Community Bank right now, $1 will get you 1,063 Korean won, and that comes courtesy of the DoD Community Bank for our fuel prices. Grab those real quick. Exchange fuel prices right now, 220 for your unleaded. Premium, 258 and my good friend, the diesel, $2.06. Cents. Good friend and good new friend. Got Army Captain Jessica Meyer, Army Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Martin still in the studio as we wrap up town talk. Uh, thank you both for being here. Anything we missed at all on our show? No, I don't think so. Got good stuff pushed good out. Day. So as we do normally with our closing, maybe uh, do some shout outs and we want to say hello to or any thanks uh, as we close up. Uh, I want to say to the talent warriors out there uh, getting their jobs done, uh, to stay strong and stay fit. Um, but mostly to uh, Lieutenant Gian, who just came back from um, a pre pre ranger school um, that we're proud of you and uh, just keep keep training, keep going hard. And sir, what about you? Any shout outs you want to say hello to or any thanks as we close it out? Absolutely. First of all, you know, coming from Hawaii, I'm, we don't do shout outs, but I definitely want to send some aloha. And uh, the other thing we have in Hawaii is the ohana. So we got some great ohana here upon arrival in Korea that's made a great transition for us. So it's an aloha to the second cab team, really 2ID. And then that Humphreys community has really embraced us as we arrived here and made us feel a part of the community. And I, I really appreciate it. So mahalo. Mahalo. We very much appreciate uh, both you guys coming on as per normal with Talent Talk. So a great show. Appreciate both of you coming on. Hope you have an awesome Blossom Wednesday evening. Let's get back into the music. Natasha Bedingfield with Soulmate. Soulmate.